So unfortunately, we have to go right into legislation and we're gonna give the public that are online an opportunity to um, express their, their concerns at the end. Sorry. You do okay, have somebody no. from law department, Ms. McClaw's on, Heather's on. Okay. Ms. Ms. McCullough, how are you and welcome. We appreciate you taking your time out. Okay. Um, so with that, Madam Clerk, if you would be so kind as to read that first piece of legislation, please. Sure. Ordinance number 1421. It's an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract for $302,345 or $40 with OHM advisors of 6001 Euclid Avenue, Suite 130, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103 for execution of a member community infrastructure program known as MCIP grant from the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District, NEORSD, to improve that East Cleveland sewer infrastructure involving the Dugway East, Eddy Branch, Sipe Study, and the Wheeler Avenue Design and Construction Project. This is requested by Mayor King, and it is sponsored by Councilman Austin. Yes. Uh, uh, Madam Clerk, what is that amount again? Would you read that amount again, please? It is $302,240. Thank you. Um, we're going to have a little discussion on this matter. I know that we've all been working on the um, clean water program, which started out as a $100 million contract to assist the county with clean water and how they manage that and where the storm water will go once it's um, placed into the system. We kind of have better control, reduce flooding, as well as you know, like this opportunity to improve our infrastructure um, and also provide our the future generations with clean water. Um, you now so, have the mayor on and you also have Mr. Iham. They've right. entered the room. Thank you, um, Honorable Mayor King for joining in. You came in right on time. Mr. Good afternoon, Councilman. Good afternoon, everybody. Great. Um, Mayor King, would you like to provide any, I, I know we have the, the fact sheet, but if you would like to communicate anything about this ordinance, 14-21, um, um, it'd be pretty cool if you want to chime in on that. This, we're just having a discussion right now. Okay, give, give me one second. Let me, let me cut this radio down on this other computer. I can hear you a little better. I got my backup headset if you can't hear me. Councilman, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, let's see. 4120 or 1421? Yes. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter the contract with $340 with OHM yeah. for infrastructure energy grant, what's these oil sewer did to improve sewer infrastructure. Okay, here we go. Wheeler Avenue. Okay, I'm I'm sorry, I'm just looking at this and I wanted to make sure this was a Wheeler Avenue project we have we have a number of uh there you go how you doing so we have a number of projects that we're looking at and that we're entering into with ohm as you're all aware ohm is our engineering firm that we have under contract to do this very work that's in front of us. So what has happened is they've uh, went out and they've actually found a secured funding to have uh, work done underneath Wheeler and then subsequently to have the road resurfaced. So I have to say, I have to let you know that the entire uh, funding is not coming out of the general fund. So we are using 
We are using 300, 2,000, right? And part of the money, one of the things that we, we often talk about is the sewer district community cost share funding. And primarily the community cost share is, is for education, uh, sewer vacuuming, sewer cleaning, sewer repair, and sewer work like this. So we have been fortunate enough through the grants that I've been able to secure, because I got to write the grant and then get awarded, to then use some of that money for other purposes. So here you see it being used for uh, sewer work and then subsequent road resurfacing. So that's what's going on on Wheeler. Mayor King, can I expound on, I'm gonna expound on, on the education piece. Um, the education that is being discussed is talking about education on how we can better um, reduce pollution, yes. preserve the clean water, and not just the infrastructure, just take better care as residents <laughs> so that we can get better with the preservation of our resources. Okay. Yes. So I have it here. It's going Emily. Up Wheeler says okay. dead end. Okay, great. Well, well Mayor, I, I didn't, you didn't have to go through the, the whole spill. I just kind of want to see if you had any big rocks to share. And I think we got the majority of the information we needed that this is indeed a grant. OHM is an opportunity to continue, has an opportunity to continue to partner with us, finding resources such as this and making sure those resources are maximized by using community cost share dollars to help us in getting the additional benefit of having the role resurface once the infrastructure is indeed improved. High five. Thank you. Um, Councilor Tell Moore, you have any notes? Councilor Chair, you told me to be- Yeah, what are you saying? Yeah. I got all the paperwork. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. Um, Councilor Moore, you have any notes or any questions? Well, I don't have a fact sheet. Uh, well, I, I wanted to ask you or the mayor about the, uh, it says uh, East 80 Road Branch Site Study. What is that? You want to take that, Mayor? Yeah, so the site study uh, looks at it, and what they're doing when they look at it is a number of things. So flooding in the basements, the interceptor in which the water comes out of the, I believe it's the Dugway interceptor. Right. And then, of course, it always goes back to the fact that we have one of the older communities and the sewer and the or the wastewater and the runoff water pipes were combined. So we had combined pipes. So that's what the study is about to see what's under there and see how to reroute this water so that basements don't flood. Now, uh, Wheeler Avenue is a little small street that was named after former Commissioner Wheeler. Is that correct? Yes, that is it. He was the first commissioner. Uh, pretty sure he was the first commissioner, but I know he was the first African-American commissioner. Well, my question is, what impact will it have on uh, the adjacent street, Emily? Because that's the one that I, I drive up and down and it's sinking all the time or, or whatever. So will it, is, it any, is it anywhere connected? Will it, is there anything we're gonna do to help that street? right next to it. So it should help to relieve strain on the sewer system coming off of Emily. So if there was issue with flooding over there, the interceptor, this should relieve it. So the work that they're gonna do should help relieve the flooding if there was any flooding on Emily itself. Now, some of the flooding did show up in people's basements on Wheeler, right? And-, and yeah. It, that it's the underground piping, and that's what they're going to address. Well, I, I, I say to everybody, this is a win-win situation. We don't have to spend a dime. So the community cost share is working for us. Thank everybody for the good work. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, before, Councilor Smith, I'm going to let you speak. Hey, Madam Clerk, can you do me a favor? Sure. Talk about that fact sheet. Can you put the fact sheet up on, on the screen for us? For the sure good can. Of the audience? 
and Thank you. it is right there. We had it ready for you. Thank you very right. much. God You're well welcome. Because these are the areas of the city that are being impacted. As you can see, Wheeler, and it does affect, affect the Emily Street that you spoke of, Councillor Martin. Right. Um, the dead end, which is 500 linear feet. Okay. And you see the scope there, and you see the yeah. cost associated and funding. Yeah, I, I see it. Okay, great. So we do have a fact sheet, and we'll make sure that the clerk sends that to you to your email, and you'll actually have it for your record. But again, we, we did come mostly prepared um, to provide the most information for the best benefit of our residents and the team here. Thank you for Thank the you, question. Mr. Austin. You look very nice with your tie on this evening. All right, um, I applaud you. <laughs> thank you. you. You lead by example, not follow. All right. <laughs> so, uh, uh, agenda back up for us. We're going to um, let Councillor Smith address his questions and or concerns with this legislation. Councillor Smith? No, I have no... Um... I have no question and concerns at this time, I, but I just want to um, say that I'm loving the partnership that, that we are having with um, OHF. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I also want to echo that appreciation for the work being prepared and provided to us without our, without, without our input. They're actually going out to seek things that would benefit the, respectfully, the health interest rights and needs of the residents. And, and the administration and the OHM partnership has been working very well for the city. And, you know, I applaud the city and I don't want to leave the council up by opening up that opportunity for this partnership to take place. So Councilman Smith, Councilor Martin, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so with that, we're going to move on to the next piece of legislation. Madam Clerk, if you would, please. Okay. And we do have Chief Worley is now in the room. So when you have questions, when it comes to this, and I saw Mayor King just had his hand up for a moment. Okay, excuse me. I, I, I will allow the mayor to have a, a moment or a comment on this legislation. Mayor King. Thank you, Councilman Chair. So while we were high-fiving and kind of in great spirits, I wanted to share something else with you. I believe that I've, I've expressed to you before the Cleveland Browns are redoing the Shaw Stadium. And it's my understanding that they are aiming for uh, in the fall to have that stadium finished. So we have a great opportunity as our engineering firm, OHM, has secured funding for the remaining section of Shaw Avenue that has not been paved. So it's right now, as it stands, it's a 50-50 match where we don't have the 50% because we don't know if or where and the amount of, of roadway and then the cost of what it will be. She's got to go out and do the engineering for that to determine the cost. That will bring us back what the 50-50 will be. But we may have an opportunity to get a new stadium and a completely paved Shaw in the city would city would look great if we would do that. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Great, um, Mayor King, I have one request. Mm -hmm. As the facts unfold that you provide the body of information to the council as soon as it becomes available. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, and, and I like if to get you, back to the days where I had y'all in, in here in these meetings because they were in here today. Okay, great. Uh, and, and as you as you know, we you know we are enthusiastic again about what OHM does. But if there is some documentation and or legislation that are that's required to to start the process, we want that, and then we'll go through the process of legislating the the back end. Um, but we, we need to know that information as soon as possible. Thank you, sir. One last thing. Yes, Smith. So Orinoco and Savannah. You guys don't see my paperwork, but Orinoco and Savannah, right? I signed those contracts today because they, they bought the contracts in with them for the sewer work, thus road resurfacing, right? And that comes out of the rejuvenated uh, partnership that we have with Cleveland Water. 
So Cleveland Water is providing the funding to do the water lines and then to resurface. So uh, Councilman Smith, I know you had something to talk about now because you've been wanting Orinoco for years. So patience pays off sometimes. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, um, I, I know this is an opportunity to be talking about additional streets that have been waiting for years. Page, P-A-G-E, right near Euclid going towards um, Terrace, the, the high side where people still live and, and, you know, it's been getting worked on little by little, but, you know, I don't want it to, to become an issue, a true safety issue before we um, bring it back up as a topic of concern. Well, thank you very much, Mayor King. High five for the, for the right now. And we'll, uh, we'll go on to the next piece of legislation. Mr. Austin, just want to jump in there real quick. Go ahead, we'll, we won't be able to resolve this, but I, I, I was on Euclid about, about 15 minutes ago to get here for this meeting. And uh, uh, Euclid, for the most part, is okay. But uh, 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 around Page, that you brought up a little bit up the street, uh, going all the way down Superior, we got some big potholes big potholes, uh, it's got to be filled in, the holes are too big. Uh, no, Ernest no. might be able to confirm that too. We got some big potholes going all the way down to, to Superior. So uh, it's, I've counted about three or four of them to the right. If you're going uh, west, like downtown, you'll see them. And right. if you're going east toward Ivanhoe, you'll see one or two, but the holes are, they're kind of big. Okay. Right. Yes, I, I didn't want to share. I got a note. For, I talked to um, Mr. Marshall today from the service department. I kind of want to yeah. stay on task. So I do have some notes that I want to share as far as um, community and roadway up, upgrades and updates from the service department. So that is one of the notes that he provided me. So I will provide that at a, at a later date. So that is something I had a concern with. And he gave me a, a, a solution and asked that we all be a little bit, little bit patient because you know, there are some safety concerns and, you know, that, that I want to share with you, but I, I want to reserve that, those notes until we get to that part of the agenda. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Because uh, if, if you don't know where they are, and I think I do, and Brandon might and Ernest, because we drive up and down there a lot, but if it's nighttime, you don't know where they are, you hit some holes, you're going to know you hit them. So, so go on ahead, go proceed, uh, Councilman Austin. Thank you, Councilor Martin. Um, Madam Clerk, if you would, okay. you can read the next Resolution piece. number 1521, a resolution authorizing the mayor to sell certain inoperable surplus vehicles through auction to scrap dealers or to sell the salvage city vehicles through competitive offers. And if none is forthcoming to junk pursuant appropriate health and safety regulations in order to provide for safe access upon city workspaces. This is requested by the fire department and it is sponsored by Councilor Austin. Great, Madam Clerk, there is a list of all these vehicles and I, don't, I hope that you have easy access to that list. And Jay, there you go, wow. <laughs> you know what you're thinking ahead of time. Yeah. Thank you. So what I wanna do for the benefit of the audience, for the group, if you will, is actually enlarge that a little bit for me, Madam Clerk. Thank you very much. These are the systems that have been either deemed not economically feasible to repair, not that they're all not repairable, but they're not economically feasible to repair and or the systems are, have been replaced, are being replaced and or are holding up critical real estate within the city's boundary. So to make a long story short, this is the list of systems that we would like to displace and how they are displaced are, are through either the sale or scrap. And obviously the dollars that are received from the sale goes back into the general fund. Dollars that are received as a matter of scrap all obviously goes back into the general fund. So this is an opportunity, a win-win opportunity to displace systems that are obsolete, not economically feasible repair, or just flat out have been replaced already. So this allows us to you know, have critical parking space for our new systems and allow us to continue to upgrade the operability of our systems within the city and improve the aesthetics of our city because we won't have these systems that are no longer operating just parked out behind city hall and in a service department area and or near a fire station. 
So subject to your questions or concerns, Mayor King, could you, you want to expound on that? Yes, thank you, Councilman. So I have the list in front of me. And what I'd like to share with you is that, uh, see this list, most of the vehicles on here have already gone through this process with city council. But as, as we've been talking back and forth for a couple months now, no one can find the records, the legislation. So I said, hey, let's, let's just stop looking, beating our heads against the wall, trying to find it. Let's just send it back down to council. They wanna go look at them. They've seen them every day, all day. They're parked over at two. Some are on Eddie Road, some are back here. They don't run. They need to be removed off of the property. We've already gotten a couple good quotes. Uh, and I had to take over the process of it. So here are the titles, right? Because the fire department, uh, you know, they were taking them and using them for scrap pieces and parts to use on other vehicles. So the mechanic that they have, he has assured me, we, we've gotten basically all the parts off of them that we can. So they're ready to go. We need to get rid of them. Right, and that's called control substitution, taking one part off and <laughs> yes. you know, repurposing for, for the good of the order and for um, cost savings also. Well, well, thank you, Madam Clerk. You can take the list down. Um, Councilor Martin, you have any concerns? My only concern is to the administration is this is junk, but some people it ain't junk. They they can use some of this. What do we do? What 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 is our method of branding of letting these business people who who deal in this kind of stuff know that this stuff is available? How do we go about doing that? That's my question. So we've been at this now. I want to say since maybe November, October. Uh, rounding up the VIN numbers, the location of them. I have pictures and all that stuff in here. I've been working at this since maybe October, November. And we have reached out to scrap dealers and people who, who buy this type of equipment to then take pieces and parts off of it and either salvage them or send them to, uh, you know how you go in restaurants and you'll see an old fire engine something in there? Mm -hmm. contacted uh, various people who've come out and they've submitted quotes on this equipment. So we, we have been reaching out to them. Thank you. And it's mostly been word of mouth. Not, All not right. newspaper or anything like that. Okay, I see our, our finance director said we can also post them on um, a government auction website also. So more to follow and that's something internal to the administration. We just want to be it known that it is okay as, uh, as I understand to this point to you know start displacing them. Councilor Smith, do you have any comments or concerns about the equipment? I think Mr. Smith is muted. I see that little red thing. Okay. I see this picture with, oh, here he is. Okay, cool. Councilor Smith, you have any concerns or no? No, sir, not at the time, thank you. Thank you, okay. Um, and, and again, I, I think that I, 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 can, I can say that I definitely not only sponsor, but support the movement of these assets from the boundaries of East Cleveland. Um, so more to follow. And, and at this time, more discussion is gonna continue. Um, there has been some three pieces of legislation that have been critical to the overall um, survival and or sustainment of our employees as well as our residents. Quality of life has been hanging in the balance um, due to three pieces of legislation. And I wanna continue to talk about those pieces of legislation until, until the council as a body has had the opportunity to truly have all their questions answered, um, concerns rectified, if you will, and we have got the information onto the agenda for um, the benefit of our residents. Uh, I came to make sure that the interest of those that voted for me and did not, the interest of the city is, is taken care of. The residents and, and employees of the city are taken care of. 
So one piece of legislation is the permanent appropriation, which we've been talking about for a few months. And based on the, now I understand there is more of a body of consensus to approve those appropriations, the permanent appropriations with a few more pieces of information. Um, the most recent pieces of information that um, I understand, as I understand it, um, pertain to a, a few, I guess I'm, I'm gonna say misinterpretations of the left and right limits. Um, so as far as the permanent appropriations are concerned, they are starting to make more necessity and more sense. We have bills that are becoming due because we've agreed to make certain balloon payments. Um, whether it's our health department contract, which is a balloon payment, the health care for our employees, which is a balloon payment that must be made and not based on a, uh, how can I say, a monthly payment. Um, they, there are lease contracts that we have out there that, are, that affect our credit rating that is required to be paid on time. And it is my, my intent to make sure that if I can do anything to influence the approval of our permanent appropriations so that we can maintain the employees that we've hired, because some of them are directly affected by our ability to pay. Nobody wants to work for free. The healthcare provisions that our employees have enjoyed and depend on, and some of them work specifically because they're getting healthcare, um, needs to be taken care of. And there is no, um, how can I say, no other way to put it, but it must be paid. And the only way it gets paid is through appropriation. Um, there is a plan that the mayor is re the mayor is required to put forth to the fiscal commission on an annual basis while you're in fiscal emergency. And based on the lack of approval of the mayor's plan, and not because the mayor has not submitted it, not because it's egregious, but because there has been some, you know, how can I say, leveraging of the appropriations for things that are not justified. And that's, that's the best way I can communicate that. Um, and looking forward to getting out of physical commission, excuse me, physical emergency is where we are as a city. I don't wanna be in physical emergency, especially if we don't have to be because we have been more financially savvy and better stewards of the resources that we have as a city. And, and I wish that you can, as a body and the residents to hear the outcome of some of the discussion that is coming out of physical commission right now, because they are asking that the council and the administration work out certain things. And, and I, I would say that I'm not, I don't have a, a I'm going to say a dog in the fight. I understand what my role is and I'm here to perform the role of a city councilman. And with that, um, if you would, Councillor um, Martin, if you have any comments and or concerns about the permanent appropriation, uh, I'd like to kind yeah, of- Yeah, uh, I do have a dog in the fight. My dog in the fight is 17 residents in the city of East Cleveland, and that's getting it done. And I've been, I want to get it done. Basically, we have to the end of March according to Ms. Mattel when I was on the meeting a couple of days ago. So I'm, I heard good news today that the mayor met with the council president and I hope they reached some common ground on issues. So we need to get this done and we can, I, I think if we, had, we have a couple of weeks to meet, I also suggested based on a conversation I had with you, Mr. Austin, that the mayor and the five council people with a mediator sit down and and see how we can move forward so we don't have an impasse like we've had the last couple of months. I, some would say we don't need it. No, I think we do need it. We should have had it last year. That was my suggestion. So I'm calling on uh, you and I have agreed that it needs to take place. And I suggested to the mayor today that we need a, a neutral mediator, someone who's not involved with East Cleveland. To mediate it, we can, we can have it. Uh, maybe at the disability place so we can have it at Parker's place, just two hours. And I think it's, it's something we need to have. The purpose of it is just to reach common ground. And I'm suggesting that we have just the elected officials there. That's the five council people and, and the mayor. If any council person decides not to come, 
that's on them. We can't beg adults to be adult. But I think we should have that hopefully in the next two or three weeks. And I'm counting on your leadership to bring help bring that about, Mr. Austin. And, and we said we both will work together. So I think that's a positive thing that we need to have. Otherwise, everything is going okay besides just this impasse. I think we're at a point now, I'm glad that the mayor met with the president that the next time we sit down and do this budget, we'll be able to pass the permanent improvement. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Yeah. Thank you, Councilor Mark. Councilor Smith. Thank you, you Chair. No, I, thank you, Chair. Um, you know, I think we should be very careful with our words because we we tried to have a mediation before that certain council me councilor council members did not show. Um, but I, I, I we know exactly what's going on. I'm all, everyone is is you know um, it's a lot of unnecessary self serving politicking going on. Period. We heard exactly exactly what the Financial Supervision uh, Commission said yesterday. We heard exactly what the chair said. We heard exactly who she, who, who she didn't want to hear from. We heard her say that it was frustrating moving forward and then moving a uh, 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 hundred steps backwards because of this current political climate that's been going on for the past six months around here, putting the people's health interest rights and needs in jeopardy, and it's a shame. It's a oh, shame. this is a court case. <laughs> you know, it, uh, no, that sounded like, uh, yeah, I, we know exactly who it was. We know exactly who it was. You know, the, around here, like it's like it's high school, but the people see it. The people see it. The people are the mediators. And the people will have the final say. So believe that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and again, we. How oh, good? Thank you. Okay. Um, those are the primary pieces. What does my system. friend know? Welcome to Amiga, my friend. What is up? There are. I help you today? Of exceptional concern. Welcome to Deck Support. My name is Mohammed. Okay. We we discussed the. All you ladies, pop your pussy like this. Shake your body, don't. Madam Clerk, thank you. Good job. Dispose of those city vehicles we've already discussed. <laughs> Propose repairs and upgrades for the city-owned buildings, and we've already started some work on on City Hall, working on a fire station and. Mayor King, if you would be so kind as to tell us some of the other areas and or concerns that you have as far as the building upgrades for the great city of East Cleveland. Yes, thank you for that. So we are in the process of upgrading uh, City Hall, including Firehouse 1, 2, the police station, the jail and the police garage as well as looking at a new service um, vehicle and office garage. Uh, so I think I mentioned this to you before that we were in the process of working to have it demolished. And I believe we do have a date now that we have the fiber situated over there to have this thing uh, demoed, the old service offices on Eddy Road. In regards to the work that's being done here, we are at Firehouse 1, Firehouse 2. Uh, some work has been done in the jail. Uh, we're moving into the bathrooms. One of the things I'm sure you'll be excited about, and I'll be coming to you, um, maybe I'll come to your committee. In fact, yes, let, if, if I can, I'd love to come to your committee with discussing the courtroom slash council chamber upgrades. So I have uh, quotes together for what new furniture would look like. I still need to get a couple quotes to, to, to outline rehab in the actual space to make it more COVID friendly uh, for spacing and use, usability. We have the 
ABI SLP who are doing the audio visual upgrades. I think they're coming out next week to do a final walkthrough layout and then quote on the installation. Uh, so I'll keep you abreast on that, uh, council chair, so that if you're available, you can come out and we can, we can start discussing uh, what council would like to see in the shared space with the court. Uh, um, I, believe, I believe that's all of them. Right, as we talk about the things that are specific to council, is there any way we can either get some, some notes or we set aside some time for one uh, to have a more, um, how can I say, complete body present so that nobody's chair is too soft and or too hard as we start talking about how we move forward as a body? Because I, I want to be the, um, the person that says, you know, I don't want to leave anybody out. Uh, I want to make sure that everybody's, um, how can I say, opinions are, heard, are voiced on the front side. That way there's no a misinterpretation of the intent. Um, I know the court has a major say, and th that's their space. They kind of let us be there as tenants. No. So um, I, I do want to make sure that everybody has a say in, in you know, what is required based on the needs of, of the judges chamber, as well as the council's use of that space. Um, Councilor Martin, I think you had a note. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to say that over the last year, and, and recently at the budget hearing with the with the mayor, with the uh, judge Dawson, uh, we brought up the audio, and why are we doing this? And this is a good thing. What well, we suggested, myself and some others, the state of we need the state of the of the art audio system in there. Uh, period, because a lot of times when people come up to uh, speak, uh. When it's when it's on the uh, cable station, you can't hear hear them that well. So if we're going to do this, if we do it right. Definitely the state of the art audio. I know the mayor brought up audio system. I, I see him showing that. That's going to that's very important to me. Okay, and, and for the council, we share that space. And thank you. And we right. and we've always had a good relationship with that. Thank you. Right. As a reminder, we also said we were sharing the cost of getting that space taken care of. And uh, I, I hope I heard the, the mayor saying he was going to put a whole bunch of money into that space and the council wouldn't have to affect their their minor budget with um, with that. But we did say we were sharing the cost once that space is upgraded. He's Thank got you. his hand up, brother, brother Austin. The mayor does. OK, Mayor King, if you would. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So what I'm holding up is the layout from the audio visual experts, if you will. And, you know, we bound it and put it in here as we went through it. So what I wanted to do from here was get the preliminary wants and needs uh, down. I met with the judge a couple times to ask him, uh, what does he envision? What would he like to see? How can we take the court to the 21st century and beyond so far as function and working uh, remotely as well as any needs for internet and streaming and whatnot, as well as a lot of courts are hearing cases in which the judge is one place, the defendant is another place, and sometimes the lawyer is a third place. So all of this captures it in there. And I, I'll proudly say, let me open up my chest. I wrote the grant, right, and got over a hundred thousand dollars. One set. Thank you, Belinda. One hundred and seventy-two thousand. I wrote the grant myself, and they laughed at it. They didn't think I was going to get it, but I got the grant, right? So a lot of this is not coming out of our funds. Where I will come to you and to the judge for are the finishing touches, right? Which which were unknown to me, right? And as you alluded to, Councilman Austin. Got to come to you to make sure you got the right chair. That's going to meet your comfort level. We're going to do what you needed to do, right? So what I will come to you and to the judge is for those finishing touches to meet your personal wants and desires. But I did write the grant and, and you know, this book is in here if anyone wants to come look at what we're getting. We still don't know where a 85 inch TV, we don't know where 85 inch TV is going in the courtroom, but that's, that's what they wrote. 
Great. Uh, Mayor King, is there any way we can go to one of those copier headquarters and let the council actually have a full copy of that document so that one of our clerks can get that and, you know, make it available? That way you can maintain your copy and, you know, we can go from there. Yes, I got an extra copy. Thank you very much. Okay, moving right along. Um, future leases, I guess that would be something that the administration have to tell us about and, and see where if there are any updates on leasing of vehicles. Yes, so earlier I saw the interim. I don't know why I keep calling him interim. He will be the fire chief. Uh, I had him in here last week and he was asking me about the 100 foot ladder truck as well as the pumper as well as other equipment that we all know, every piece of equipment around here is on its last leg. And I, I told the uh, chief, Chief Worley, that although council has passed and accepted the uh, FEMA grant, there's no funding to execute the FEMA grant. Per the rules of different granting agencies, for those of us who worked on grants, you have to look at the grant to see how to execute the grant. FEMA grant wants you to pay for the vehicle and then get reimbursed, right? So we can't finance the 100 foot ladder truck. It's a million plus dollars. So we need desperately to pass the permanent appropriation so that I can, we can pull the trigger on 100 foot ladder truck and then begin the negotiations and the wants around the master lease of the five vehicles, fire pumper, EMS, salt truck, salt truck, and then the street sweep. So those are those are in the works. We just need to get the permanent appropriations in place so that we can then move those forward. Okay. Well, okay. Well, Mayor King, I, I will have a note for you on, on that at the end. Um, so, um, Councilor Martin, any concern with leases or the status that the mayor just discussed? No, uh, I want to thank him for get, writing the grant, get the hundred and seventy-two thousand dollars, uh, and uh, it's my hope that once is once we do cross the T's and dot the I's, that we have a brand new courtroom with the with the state of the art uh, equipment, audio, visual, uh, the the eighty-five inch TV, whatever. Uh, I think that's fantastic. Thanks for the good work, Brandon. Thank you. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Yes. Dr. Smith. I also want to commend our uh, mayor for the for the great work. Thank I you. just I just hope that we as a council can can get it together because um again we can't um we can't help our great fire force serve the health, interest, rights, and needs of the people. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on to the next item on the agenda. The seasonal service department infrastructure and updates. So this is, I talked to counselor, correction, I talked to um, Mr. Marshall, our service department director today and asked him what, if anything, any concerns and or information that would be good for the order and he said it will just kind of remind the people that the snow removal has a priority. And he said, number one priority is making sure the hills were safe because if you start down Lee Road and you can't stop at the stop sign and you go right through, then that's, that's somebody potentially somebody's life. Um, he said that the main streets were a very high priority um, for maintaining the throughput so people can move through our city in a way that's safe. And then he said the emergency services routes had to be cleared at all times, and we know why. Um, so the police can go out and save your life. So that the emergency services personnel can go out and save your life. And he said it kind of remind our, our folks that the side streets will come, and it may be a, an issue where the snowstorm hits, we clear the, the main roads, the emergency routes, as well as the hills, and then another storm hits. So we may not be able to get to the side streets in the same order because we have a, the priorities need to be addressed again before we can get to the side street, but as necessary and or you have a specific purpose for somebody has to go to a, a life limit eyesight appointment, 
then let's call Mr. Marshall or call the mayor's office and see if we can change that priority to get that person needs taken care of. Everybody's um, passage from point A to point B is important. However, we want to make sure that, you know, when I say we, I'm talking about as a city, I believe that we would want yes. to make sure that the best benefit and best use of the equipment can be um, leveraged. And he said, right now we have two plows going and we have two pickups with the um, plow on the front that can move some of the um, less than heavier snow on some of the side streets. So we have four systems out there working almost around the clock to make sure that your um, travels can be safe. He also addressed potholes. He said right now during the winter, they do cold patching and cold patching is not as affixed to the surface or the hole that's being patched. And oftentimes if the material um, starts getting water and or freezes, then that cold patch will lift up out of that hole and be a pothole the next day. And when the plows come by, it'll just scoop up that chunk of material that was placed in that hole and you will be in the same situation that we're in. However, as the weather permits, he said he will get out to address those potholes and make those patches as possible. And as the weather warms up, obviously the number of patches and or potholes that will be filled will continue to improve. These are some of the seasonal changes. And, and as you know, that there is still an impact from the debris that we can keep out of our, our roadways and so on and so forth. And as you, uh, as, as the trash is collected, please remove your trash cans from the road and reduce the number of hazards in the road. And that's <clears throat> something we can do as, as a citizen. Each and every individual can contribute to that overall safety. So that's what I have for the updates for the roads and the infrastructure discussion we just had with the mayor discussing how we're going to start over by Wheeler and Emily to have some infrastructure improved as well as a couple of roads that are going to be resurfaced in row in, in um, war three. Um, subject to your questions and or, or, and or concerns, uh, I can't see if the mayor has his hand up. Mayor King, would you like to have a note in addition to what I've shared about the service department and the infrastructure upgrades? Uh, yes, you did an excellent job on the uh, issues with pothole, <laughs> pothole patching uh, in this type of weather, it's actually uh, not the best use of resources to patch them. You have to wait till the snow stops and kind of you get a little consistency with the weather. So you did a great job with that explanation. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Um, Councilor Martin? Yes, I, I stepped away. I didn't hear the, the last part about the, the potholes. I, oh. I, I did, I do, uh, you brought up and the mayor's aware, uh, when you leave today, uh, you ride down Euclid, you'll see them holes I'm talking about, especially if you're going east. Uh, uh, when you go past uh, Lee Road, you'll see them on right. both sides and the holes are pretty big. Uh, we got some orange things, which means that it's, it's almost going west uh, one lane, but you can see the hole, and it, it, it and I know where they are because I'm up and down you could almost every day like everybody else. Other people want, so I'm I'm concerned about that. So, I, uh, if the machine, we have something we can put in there so it's at least passable, uh, or or I, I see a problem with it. I as it's it's been that way for a few weeks now, and what happens is when uh, everybody's riding around in trucks and stuff today. Every time you go over it, it just makes the hole bigger. So uh, when the weather's nice, you can see the hole real well. You can't see it when the snow, we're supposed to get uh, some more snow tonight. So I, I, I'm counting on all of us, especially the mayor, to try to at least put do something to put something in them holes. Okay, because you're, gonna, you're hearing it from me, but you don't want to hear it from other people, it, which you may. So that's that's only my, my that's my only concern, and you know we all feel very good about our service department. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Dr. Smith. Thank you. I just want to thank everyone for your service, and um, especially thank the great people of East Cleveland who took time out to join this very very important committee meeting. Thank you all, and and thank you for the prayers for Patricia. Thank you. Amen. Okay, um, as far as the 
general services, basic updates, I, I will tell you that um, it is my goal to remain active and supportive of what we have to do individually and collectively to help us in this community. So general services affects every piece of infrastructure, everything it takes for you to travel up and down a road, cable, telephone, bridges, underpasses, overpasses, service department. These are the services, you know, and obviously water, sewer. These are the services that we have a say and we can do a better job at, at maintaining and keeping up with. You know, if, if something is broken, uh, if you drive by a pothole or a sinkhole, let the service department know and or the administration know. And uh, I've personally had to make calls to the um, sewer district and to the Cleveland Water so that they'll know that a, a fire hydrant has been knocked down and, and so on and so forth. So we have to remain vigilant and do the small stuff it takes to take care of our city. Um, that's, that's for the most part. And it seems like everybody has basically had their, their note. Um, as we get ready to close, Councilor Martin, you have anything before we go on to- Yeah. This is really directed to you, uh, Austin, because yes, you're a military person. But uh, over the last couple of weeks, I've been looking at Smithsonian. They did anything on the Tus Tuskegee Airmen. And, and the wars, and they did a thing on, I, I saw a thing a week ago on uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, where people had it going on business-wise, Brandon King, and in 1921, uh, white folks got jealous and burned it down and killed or killed close to 300 people. And the challenges we have, and when I was looking at that, I thought about us, uh, we have the potential to become a great city uh, and a unique city run by African-Americans in the state of Ohio. So when you look at our history, and I, and I direct this to Brandon too, because he's, he likes history, we could do some great things and, and our grandkids and their kids is, will say that Austin was there, Brandon was there, Smith was there, Gowdy was there, et cetera. And, it's, and the city is booming and, 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 and uh, doing great things. We have, we have that now, okay? Especially when we look at this recently with Donald Trump and, and that situation, it should give us incentive to come together and let's do what we have to do. Thank you very much, Brother Austin. Thank you. Councilor Martin. Um, Councilor Smith, I'm going to um, see if we can open up the opportunity for the public that wants to have a, a moment before we close out, um, and, and then we'll, we'll let you have your, your last word, if that's okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, to recognize the great residents that, that have waited on the line, um, if you would, this is your opportunity to speak. Um, you can speak on any topic. If you would be so kind as to keep it to two minutes or less, we would really appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody have anything they want to say? Yes, Counselor. Kelvin Irby, 14802 Elm Avenue. Greetings, sir. I have a major problem, and I'm in front of my problem as we speak. Okay. Into my street has a, a water main break that the city should have been notified of it way before now. Uh, both drains are blocked up. As soon as I get this camera to turn around, I'll share it with you guys. Matter of okay. fact, I'll walk and do it. Because can you put it on the big screen? This is my street. This is Elm Street. I'm standing in the middle, water to the left. Water to the right, ice. Vehicles have been stuck here. Is there, a, is there a catch basin right there, Mr. Irby? It is two diagonally from each other. Are they both, are they clogged? They are very clogged. Back in the summertime when I announced it to you, Mr. Austin, nothing has been done about it. When they tore this building down here, those uh, constructed workers, 
did not clean the catch bases, did not clean the drains, left erosion and mud. Now, this ice build goes from this house to the corner. So you see where the vehicle is. Not, not well, but I can imagine. <clears throat> you tell me that there's no salt on this part. There has not been any services done to the water main break. Now, today, there were four vehicles stuck here, and one of them I personally own due to the fact my wife decided to choose this way to come home. Very upset. As you can see, again, the depth of that hole is approximately 12 inches. I measured it. The depth of this hole is six inches. I measured water and a drain that's blocked. Well, uh, going in it. I appreciate the, the tour and uh, it give me about 15 minutes after this meeting is over. Me and you will take the shovel and clap things up. And that's what I'm talking about. The, the, as we can, when we can, you know, getting out there and doing something to poke a hole in the top of that thing, let the water go. If it's 